Welcome back to RCHelp.com. I'm Tony, and in the last video, you guys saw me install the servos. And today, we're going to get the servos linked up to the elevators and to the ailerons as well. It's not that hard of a process, but I'm going to go into some detail about how to take 047 wire that is relatively long and keep it from flexing, you know, because it, it flexes pretty easily and most times you're going to be pulling back on the stick which is actually pushing this rod and that'll actually sit here and cause it to bend so I'm going to show you guys exactly how to brace these up without putting another hole in the side of our nice pretty fuselage and get these to where they act exactly how they're supposed to I'm also going to get into a little bit of detail on how to make a z-bend I don't have a pair of z-bend pliers but you can make these with just regular small needle nose pliers it's not that hard uh, it takes a little bit to get used to but once you do a couple of them it's easy as pie so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this elevator rod put on now on the elevator you'll see that i've already got an easy connector back here and i don't have one on the servo but if you look on the rudder i've got one on the servo but not back there I'm probably going to leave this one here, but I'm going to turn it around, mainly because it's already there. But on the elevator, what we're going to do is we're going to take the Z-bend side and stick it in that hole. And then we're going to run the wire back to the elevator. Now, don't worry about hooking up your radio just yet. Right now, make sure this control arm is 90 degrees to this rod. That is all you have to make sure of. We can trim this out later and if it goes to a funky direction and you're getting full up elevator or whatever, we'll just pop that servo arm off and put it back where we need it. Then you sub trim to get it back where we had it before. Now the hardest part on this is going to be that easy connector because it screws on the inside. What we're going to do is get everything on there. Then we're going to have to pull this up and put a screwdriver right through the rudder in order to tighten it. Now the way you make a Z-bend is obviously you're going to start out with just a regular straight wire. Always work from the end and come inside. Don't try to sit here and turn this end. Uh, you just you don't have enough leverage on it to make it simple. What I do is I come in between an eighth and a quarter, probably three sixteenths of an inch, and then just put a 90 degree bend in that wire. Now what I do is I take the tip of my pliers here and I just barely grasp the very end of that wire right up against that little bend that we just put in there. Clamp down on it as hard as you possibly can. The better your pliers are the easier this is going to be. These pliers are going to flex and I'm waiting for them to break. But now just take it and bend your wire up that quick you've got a perfect z-bend it's not quite angled enough so what we'll do is we'll just grab a hold of it again and pull on a little bit more and as you can see that one's perfect this one's kind of coming out a little bit it's kind of a balancing game to get it perfect but like i say once you do it a few times it's actually pretty simple so guys that's all there is to making a z-bend they're really easy and if you spend the 25 bucks to get the actual pair of pliers it's even easier than this just make sure you get a good pair of wire cutters if you're going to be cutting this be extremely careful at the end this is 047 inch wire and 47 thousandths and i've already had this shoved into my hand uh it went in about my old probably a good inch this stuff gets very sharp when you start cutting it so be careful now on these connectors here like i say i'm just going to put this uh as a z-bend up here whenever you make your holes in these the best thing you can do grab a lighter and heat up the end of a wire and then find the hole you want and poke this in it and let this wire gauge the size of your hole i found it is much better to actually melt the hole and then push it all the way through to where it gets to the cool metal and let it solidify than it is to get a drill bit and have the chance of it wallering out if you go too fast or have too high of a speed what I'm going to do is I'm going to back that screw off back here and get this rod set in that little bitty hole. Now that we have the wire run through this hole, don't tighten this down yet because we're not done. This is an extremely long wire. Now, 
one thing we could do is we could grab a popsicle stick, cut a little bit off, stick it inside of the fuselage and drill a hole and run this through that hole. Well, I personally think that looks pretty much like crap. So that is not what we're going to do. Instead, I had an old pair of plastic blades and I took these out of them. It's a 400 size helicopter of plastic blades and this is all that's giving us strength. Bad idea. What we want to do, I had to put a little bit of a bend in it right here uh, because of the way this angle is. So, we want to just kind of measure this out, rough guesstimate about how long we need it. And then we need to cut it off right there. Now that we've got our rod cut to the right length, we need to take our wire back off the airplane. Now that we got the wire off and we got our Z bend up here and then we've got that little bit, I'm not sure if you guys can see it right here, but there's a little bit of an angle that I had to put in that. We need to somehow attach this spar to this rod. That's all we're going to need and then we're going to soak it with a little bit of, little bit of CA. What we'll do, first of all, make sure that you're putting this to where it looks the best if you care about looks I do so and then take your thread and you're going to want to wrap the ever loving crap out of this thing basically what you're doing is you are tying up that wire to that spar I always like to go about an inch worth of thread until I can't see the wire or the spar anymore all right, one side down, one side to go. Once you have both ends done, grab you a little CA, and we're gonna wanna completely saturate this, but not so much that it's actually dripping down onto your table. Once you have them completely saturated and you've made a nice little mess on your table, all you gotta do is let it dry. All right, so you can see, we got it installed on the servo. I've got both of my ends here uh, super glued and even though they don't look the best it still looks halfway decent and then I've got it locked in down here as you can see the elevator surface is straight my arm is at a 90 degree angle we know we can get this set up once we get the radio system put in the airplane now all we got to do is the same exact thing for the rudder as you can see we've got our elevator on it's braced up I opted not to brace the rudder because the rudder is such a small control surface and we're not going to be using it that much only in a turn but the elevator is always used to bank the airplane around now by all means if you think you need one on the rudder put one on the rudder you know it only takes maybe five minutes uh, to completely wrap one of those on the rudder wire and call it done. Now if that's done, let's get that wing over here and get those ailerons hooked up. Now the wing is done in the exact same manner, meaning there are Z-bends that are going to go through the Dubro control horns and then it's going to go into an easy connector down here. To put these in, it's even more simple than it is on the elevator. Pop it in, run it through your hole in that connector right there, get your aileron, mostly level get your servo arm at 90 degrees and then tighten down the screw that's it that's all you got to do i'm going to do that for both sides took about two minutes now we have working ailerons now remember what i had said before in one of the earlier videos you can cut this right here use this as your flap and then put another servo out here to use as your aileron now that that's done we need to get some Velcro and start getting some electronics put into that fuselage. Now this right here is what we're going to be installing. Uh, basically, I've got two rolls of Velcro. You can purchase this at Walmart or any other discount store. Uh, this comes in six foot rolls. You've got your soft or the loop and then you've got your hard plastic or the hook. Most of the time I'll put the soft loop side on the battery and the receiver and even on the ESC but on this ESC I've actually got the hook side so what I always do is always put it on whatever you're doing first and then take this pull it out cut it off to the correct length and keep it on there on each one of these pieces for the battery you want it to be about this much longer on each end that way you have room to move that battery back and forth 
So I'm going to get all of my Velcro cut, get it all stuck on these pieces, and get them ready to come into the fuselage. Alright, we got the pieces cut for the ESC, the receiver, and the battery, and we're ready to put them in there. Before we put this battery one in, we're going to need to put our supports on here for our rubber bands, and we're going to need to cut out more pieces to go on the inside to help back those pieces up. We'll get into that here in just a little bit. Now the first thing you need to do is figure out where you're going to put your receiver. Remember, this has a removable wing and you need to be able to unplug the aileron servos. So you need somewhere that's accessible. Now obviously my wires are plenty long for the elevator and rudder. So I can put this just about anywhere. If you wanted to, you could put a little table in here to actually set that on. And it will give you a lot better access. You could even put it in here kind of like at an angle. So it's even easier to unplug your aileron servos. I'm going to go ahead and plug these in and try to get a better idea of where I want to put this. Now that I've got those two plugged in, now we can figure out where we want to put this inside the fuselage. On my last one, I had a position about right there. I liked it there, so that's exactly where I'm going to put it. As you can see there, I've got my receiver in there. It's going to give me plenty of room to put my spar through here to mount the wing. Now we can get to that ESC. Now if you remember, we created this trap door just for this occasion. Reach inside and grab your wires. Now from what I've learned over the years is two of these wires are going to be backwards on this speed control and this motor. Yours may be different, they may be not. It just, it really just depends. Alright, got our motor wires put in. We need to put this somewhere where it's going to get the most amount of airflow even though this thing is going to be put inside, not outside, and still be accessible to where we can still plug that battery in. Now, as you can see, I'm using the XT60 connectors on this one. Uh, I usually use Dean's, but I got some batteries uh, that had these XT60s on it, so I said, why not? Now, because of the length of this and because I need to plug the battery in and everything, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mount it right down in here almost as low as I can get it, maybe a quarter of the way up. Okay, so I mounted a little bit higher than what I had planned on. But still, this is going to give me great access uh, to the ESC. The air that will come into here will actually come over the ESC and just help keep it cool. Plus, it's on the other side of the fuselage from the receiver and I'll be able to run this wire along the side then onto the spar that I'll have back here and still have plenty of room to plug it in and keep everything out of my way for when I want to put that battery in there. Speaking of the battery, we need to get our wing mounts in here before we can mount the battery because we need to figure out our center of gravity. Now to get your wing mounts on, the first thing that you're wanting to do is put that wing on so you can get an idea of where this thing needs to go. Now what we want to do is come in just a little bit from the outside of the wing. And then you'll want to drop down on the fuselage about a half an inch. So half inch in, half inch up. And that's where you're going to want to put it. Same thing with the front. Since barbecue skewers have a point, just push these right through. Once you get your holes put in the fuselage, push that piece all the way through. Don't forget to put your backers in here. It's just another piece of foam board, uh, scrap piece put it in here and hot glue it to the side that'll keep this from wanting to pull up and ripping the side of your fuselage. Once that's done you got both front and back in there just put a little hot glue on the inside and then kind of work it back and forth a little bit let that set and then come out and cut these off starting at about three quarters of an inch and if you want to go shorter you can uh, but it's always best to go longer you know cut long you can trim later. I'm going to get my other one put in, get my backing plates put in here, hot glue everything in, and we'll be ready to set the center of gravity on this thing. Well, as you can see, we mounted the wing mounts into the fuselage. I do have my little backing plates up in there to help keep from uh, pulling these out. I've got my ESC mounted in here. I've got my receiver mounted in here. Now we need to get the battery in here. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. There's always different ways to cut a pizza. What I like to do, open up this hatch and then take your battery, make sure to leave the Velcro on it, put it in here, and set it to the approximate location. Now obviously it's going to be off to one side or the other. 
we'll deal with that later but what this wire up here is going to allow you to do is push this fore and aft to get your proper center of gravity now we need to put that wing on now that we have the wing mounted onto the airplane what you want to do is you want to measure back three inches it's going to be somewhere in this area that's where you want your center of gravity the way I do it is I'll put my finger about right here on each side of the wing and then pick up and see if it's tail or nose heavy you need to make an adjustment just pull your battery or push your battery and then try it again wow I guess that vinyl did add a lot of weight the battery is all the way up here in the nose and we want it mounted somewhere back here so we're probably going to need to add some lead weights to the nose of this but I'm going to go ahead and go with it like it is and see how it flies remember the lighter you can make these planes the better they're going to fly unless you're on a windy day and then you want room to push that battery forward to help penetrate that air a little bit more once you figure out the position of your battery take your velcro and take the backing off and put it down directly in the center of the plane if you want you can put it off to the right of the plane a little bit to try to help with the pitching but I always put mine right in the center all right we have our center of gravity set oh about a quarter inch ahead of 50 percent uh, that's right at about where I found it really good on the last trainer the vinyl is going to add some weight to the tail plus I've got another servo back here and another control of one of the linkage blah 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 I didn't think it was going to be that drastic of a difference though but it is and like they say it is what it is so all we got to do now is put the prop on yeah I'm still going to put these side pieces on up here uh, I'll get to it I promise get the prop on uh, get the receiver bound to the radio and then we're ready to set all this up now on your wing if you want to put some popsicle sticks up here to help protect the wing and keep it from collapsing like it is back here by all means run a popsicle stick across there and help protect the foam on your wing I'm going to do exactly that after I wrap a popsicle stick in blue vinyl don't forget come over to the forum if you have any questions these plans they're free come over download them purchase a lanyard purchase a shirt if you guys need some decals cut out let me know and we'll get you some decals cut out guys I want to thank you for watching we'll see you in the next video